what's up guys it's Kelly welcome back to my channel and welcome to the Lamentable Library book club announcement part one <laughs> If you find yourself enjoying this video then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here and would like to see more of me then please subscribe. So The Lamentable Library is a book club that I run with my friend Hannah where we read gothic books, horror, thrillers, basically anything that has like dark, spooky, creepy or dark academia vibes. So 2021 was a very intense year, like a lot of stuff happened in my life, Hannah wrote and released a book, it was just, it was a lot and Lamentable Library in some ways suffered for it. I often didn't announce the books on time, we didn't always get a chance to like do the live shows, I didn't always read the book, <laughs> but this year we've put a bit more like planning into it so it can run a bit more smoothly and we've planned out our book choices for the whole year. So today I'm going to be announcing the first one to six books, so January through to June, and then I'll leave a link to Hannah's channel where she will be announcing the books from July to December, so be sure to check out both of our videos so that you can see all the books that we're going to be reading throughout the year. Also check out Hannah's shop Waypoint Books because she always creates exclusive discount codes for Lamentable Library members to purchase the book club book each month. Also be sure to follow our Twitter and join our Discord linked in the description if you aren't already so that you can stay up to date with announcements, so that you can get the discount codes, and most importantly so that you can chat about the books along with us as we read them all. So starting off in January we have Horrid by Katrina Leno which is a contemporary horror that sounds fantastic and is compared to Stephen King and Agatha Christie. So after her father's death we follow Jane and her mother as they move from California to this like dilapidated old house in Maine where her mother grew up. They just want a fresh start but after they get there, things start to get a little weird. Jane is trying her best to just like live her best life and deal with her grief and all of these feelings that she's got about missing her father and she's finding a lot of comfort in old books and in memories of her dad and she's making some new friends in her new town which is great. She's also attracted the attention of like the local bad seed and is trying not to get caught up in all of that drama and not to like let her worst instincts come out and just make the situation a lot worse. And on top of dealing with all of that, her mum and her mum's return to this house that she grew up in seems to be sending her in a downward spiral and she won't really explain why. Added to all of that, there is a storeroom in their house that her mum keeps locked, but Jane discovers one day that it is not in fact a storeroom, it is a child's bedroom that has been like perfectly kept and preserved at the very least for the last few decades and it is perhaps not quite as empty of inhabitants as it might appear. So all of the stuff that her mum is dealing with she's not really sure if it's just grief, if it's mental illness or if it's something a bit more sinister one might even say horrid. This sounds so good and so creepy and so tense, I just I cannot wait. And then in February we're going to be reading The Mercies by Karan Millwood Hargrave, which is set in Norway in the 1600s and is based on real witch trials that took place there. So it's set in this little coastal village on an island in Norway and all of the men that inhabited the island were wiped out in a storm. So the island's inhabitants are now solely female and they have to figure out how to fend for themselves. This in the 1600s attracts a little bit of suspicion and it's not long before a man arrives determined to stamp out the witchcraft that's happening here because obviously a group of women living by themselves have to be witches. Three years later a man arrives who hunted witches in Scotland and is determined to stamp out the witchcraft that he is convinced is happening on this island. He brings with him his young Norwegian wife who is both like attracted to his power and kind of in awe of him and also completely terrified of him and when she gets to this island and she sees these women she sees something that she's never seen, she sees women having independence and it shocks her but also it just like calls to her and she starts to develop a friendship with one of the women on the island and it starts to lead to something that the two of them could never have expected. However, all her husband can see when he looks at this island is an evil place untouched by God and women that need to be basically wiped out. Again, sounds so good. I've never actually read anything by Karan Millwood Hargrave, but I've heard such good things about her and I've heard really good things about this book in particular. I think it's going to be a very interesting read and I love witch trial stories. I know that this isn't quite witch trials, but that kind of vibe, 
yeah, I think it's going to be really, really great. Then in March we're going to be reading Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendall Blake, which is a ghost story that I remember seeing everywhere on booktube when it came out, and I wanted to read it at the time but didn't, and very excited to be finally reading it now, ten years later. This book has been out for ten years, it's wild. We follow Kaz, who kills the dead. So he's basically a ghost hunter and his job is to seek out ghosts and destroy them. So he starts seeking out a ghost that the locals call Anna dressed in blood. She's only ever been seen wearing the same dress that she wore when she was murdered in 1958. Once her dress was white, now it is stained with the blood of all of the people that she has killed since she died, because she kills every person who crosses the threshold of the Victorian home that she once lived in, except that she leaves Kaz alive. I love a good ghost story and this is a YA ghost story that was published in 2011. I know that there's gonna be like an angsty romance and I'm, I'm living for it. So here for it. In April we're going to be reading These Violent Delights by Micah Nemereva? I don't know. Not by Chloe Gong. This is the Dark Academia one, not the fantasy one. Just want to stress that. I'm just gonna say this is compared to The Secret History meets Call Me By Your Name with elements of Hitchcock and I'm obsessed. It's set in Pittsburgh in the 70s and we follow two university students who are just like inexplicably drawn to each other. We follow Paul who is a very talented artist but is very insecure about the fact that he comes from like a working class family and he's also grieving the loss of his father. He meets Julian and is completely consumed by him. He has a huge amount of admiration for him, he f sees him as like his sole intellectual equal and Julian is wealthy and effortlessly charming and, and Paul is just drawn to him, but for all of his good qualities Julian can also be horribly cruel, and the more time that they spend together the more they just become utterly consumed by each other to the point where it becomes really obsessive and unhealthy, and then a violent traumatic event causes them to reevaluate their relationship. That's about the extent of what I know about it, but it sounds incredible. I've heard excellent reviews of it. I I'm so excited to read this. I know I'm saying that about all of them, but like obviously we also weren't going to choose books that we weren't excited about, you know? <laughs> In May we're going to be reading Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. This is a reread for me, but I read it probably a good 10 years ago, so I'm very excited to revisit the world and maybe finally carry on with the rest of the series, because I, I never did. So we meet a vampire called Louis who is telling the story of his life and afterlife. He tells his story sort of leading up to being turned, and how he was then turned by the vampire Lestat, who obviously is one of Anne Rice's like most famous and enduring characters. She wrote so many books about him. So he weaves the story of his afterlife for us, his very tumultuous relationship with Lestat, his finding of a lost young child in New Orleans, and how he turned her into a vampire, and the way that their relationship evolved from there as she grew and as she grew in intelligence and maturity and emotions but we're still trapped in the body of a young child which leads to some interesting situations. It's problematic but it's also a real good time. I'm very excited to be revisiting the story as an adult and seeing if my thoughts have changed on it in the last 10 years. And then in June we'll be reading The Lost Ones by Anita Frank, so we follow a young woman in 1917 called Stella who is reeling from the death of her fiance. Lots of death being the catalyst for these books, like I said, dark spooky vibes is, is all we're going for with this book club. So her fiancé dies and her pregnant sister invites her to come and stay with her at her manor house, but when she gets there she finds that the atmosphere of the house is like very uneasy, that her sister is gripped by fear, gripped by suspicion, and she's, she's, she's not really sure how to handle all of this. <laughs> And like weird things start happening, Stella starts hearing like sobbing in the middle of the night, she has footsteps on the stairs, and aided by a wounded war veteran, Stella starts to investigate the history of the house and uncovers some startling revelations along the way. Again, we love like a good, just like classic, gothic, creepy house story, and I think this is going to be a great one. So those are the January to June picks for Lamentable Library. I hope I did a good job explaining them, I'm just basing this all off what I got off Goodreads because obviously I haven't read these books yet, so hopefully I have enticed you, hopefully you'll be joining us. Like I said, links will be in the description for our Twitter and our Discord, as well as Hannah's channel, so be sure to go and check her out so that you can see the books that we'll be reading from July through to December. Very excited for the new chapter of Lamentable Library and yeah, just to kind of have things run a bit smoother this year, be a little bit more organised. <laughs> 
and hopefully it'll be a great time for all involved. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comments which book you're most excited to read along with us. If you did enjoy this then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want already. In the description you'll find links to all of my social media, that's my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads as well as my blog and my TikTok. You'll also find links to my Patreon, my Redbubble, my coffee account, my online store, my Blackwells affiliate link and my Script affiliate link if you'd like to support me using any of those. But that's it for me today and I shall see you all again very soon. Bye! My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep, and work. I am not boring, I just stick to what I know.